everyone, welcome to Connected. I am Fabiana Espinosa and I'm ready to converse with Samantha Silva. Samantha and a group of professionals and volunteers work on the program Caminamos Juntos, a program created to assist Mexican nationals deported from the United States. Do not go anywhere. Connected starts right now. Samantha Silva was born in Acapulco, Mexico, and has a background in marketing from the Universidad Interamericana. She arrived in San Miguel de Allende City in 2012 and started working as a manager of a trade fair company that makes products with Mexican-themed fabrics. Working with local seamstresses for seven years was a very enriching experience for her, since she got close to local communities around San Miguel. Samantha learned about all the volunteering for an NGO supporting women and after three years she got the opportunity to run the NGO Caminamos Juntos, an organization that supports people that have been deported. It is my pleasure today to introduce Samantha Silva. Samantha took the time today to be with us and she is in Mexico in the beautiful city of San Miguel de Allende. Sam, thank you so much for being here and also for sharing and letting the world know about this amazing work that you and the Caminamos Juntos organization do together. Welcome to Connected. Sam, please tell us, how did your life lead you towards the path of social work? Hi, Fabiana. Thank you for having me. And, well, I can tell you that I was working for like nine years in a um, company and I started volunteer with different NGOs and realized that I was a privileged woman and I wanted to do something with my privilege. So. I start sharing my thoughts and my concerns about having more time to be involved with NGOs. And, and finally, I got the opportunity to work with Caminamos Juntos like a year ago and dedicate my life to, to the social work. So I started doing it um, around a year ago. I see. And this is a work that is so much needed nowadays. Tell us, how did Camino, Caminamos Juntos, how the organization come to life? Well, uh, exactly around a year ago when, when Trump won the elections, there was a group of people in San Miguel. San Miguel has a huge community of uh, expats. So there was a group of people talking about what to do with all the deportations that um, we saw coming and uh, we got a call from a shelter that received, uh, in, I think in, in the period of a week, uh, 40, 40 people that were deported. So there was, we saw there was a need and there was uh, uh, conversations about how to start the, the organization and we just started like building the services. This was a year ago, like we officially turned a year like four days ago so congratulations <laughs> yeah thanks so okay so you guys saw the need because of this new event that happened and you know yeah. it, it had a lot of impact and different families and on different um let's say situations in the u.s so tell us exactly how would you describe the program how does it work yeah well, originally we uh, assumed that we were going to have more individual mail coming, but as the time went, went on, we realized that we were having more families. And the situation like Caminamos Juntos evolved from like just giving human aid to people that needed it at the moment to now having uh, uh, legal consultations, we deal with a lot of uh, U.S. citizen status in Mexico, like apostilles, a lot of legal uh, uh, issues that we have to face. So we have a legal 
commi committee, we have a mental health committee, we have therapists uh, working with people and family and uh, Spanish classes because we have kids that uh, don't speak English, it's Spanish. So right now what, how the, the program works is that one, depending on the need, we have a lawyer that can take care of the legal consultations. We have a therapist that can take care of the mental health. We have a support group. We have a teacher doing Spanish classes. And we're also collaborating with other NGOs in San Miguel de Allende for medical and other services. I see, so it's very complete. And because I, as I always say, and I like to uh, acknowledge, is the fact that every single issue and every single person have different aspects. So yeah. Sam, tell me, let's say somebody is in the problem. It's having issues with their uh, situation in the, new, the US. So they contact you by email <laughs> and they say, tell you this is happening. Yeah. How is the process exist exactly step by step? So what we, since the U.S., what we provide is safe passages. So if, uh, let's say, for, as an example, a lawyer tells us, okay, my client just lost the case and he's going to be deported in Tijuana. So we connect with somebody in Tijuana that can uh, pick them up at the border take them to the bus station and we receive them in Querétaro and we bring them to San Miguel. In San Miguel, we provide with housing, food and clothing, which is like our immediate support. And then during this time, we talk about documentation, we talk about plans in the future. We create like an individual action plan with each person to, to know what they want to do. Our resources right now is basically settling in San Miguel de Allende. But we're, if somebody wants to go to Puebla because their family is in Puebla, we try to connect them with different uh, organizations there that can support them for uh, settling in there. And if they decided to stay here, we provide like employment guidance so they can start uh, looking for a job. Most of them, as I said, like we have families, so most of them want to settle so they can bring their family to to Mexico and then we we work with with them like we accompany men accompany them so they can settle in the community right and I think what you first said is so important because we hear on the news oh people being deported but it's not like they're being deported back to their houses or to their cities no. they're just past the board and they are almost dump like right immediately on the next square feet correct yeah. so yeah. that's a beautiful and um such a specific work that you guys do going them to pick them up and bring them right yeah. whether it's to their own original place or Querétaro uh, San Miguel de Allende mm -hmm. so the goal of the institute of the organization is basically help them reinsert on in society yeah. right and also i can imagine how different can one case to another be because yeah. there are different uh situations our family members and stuff like that based on the experience you have on the organization what is the most common situation you have seen so far well i as you said like each each case is different each uh, family is different each individual is different and based on that like we something that we're proud of is that we're a really flexible organization maybe because, because we are startup or maybe because we realize that we have to be flexible in order to provide our services because the needs are different but the most common thing that we see right now is the documentation issues that it's it's a, a real problem that we have to deal with because for the kids to have access to education and medical services there's a lot of things uh, legally that you have to do and it's different from where they come from like if they come from texas if they come from california like all the all the process is different but it's urgent that they have the access to these services so it's the most common thing that we deal with because uh, most of the people that we 
that we receive is people that have been living in the U.S. for more than 25 years, and they already had a family there. So most of their uh, family members are uh, citizens. So that's basically like our common factor with families. But then the the depression that comes with the transition has been also like uh, uh, an important piece that we realized that we had to put more effort on. And that's why we created like a mental health committee and we're doing the support groups and giving individual therapy. So, so people can like settle in San Miguel, but also like have a, a little bit of a relief emotionally. Right. Because it's a situation so delicate. It happens from one day to another. You have your life, you have your, you know, your day by day, your family, you take care of everybody. And then all of a sudden you're out and you have to realize and, and most importantly, you're apart from them. So I'm yeah. sure the emotional part is, it's challenging. Yeah, and, and most of the, most of the people that we get really went to the U.S. when they kids so they don't know Mexico or they don't understand the culture in some way or they they have a hard time with the transition so that's that's something that we want to work with with them and that's why we treat each case individually right very important Sam Please, um, well, and this is always when I ask this to my guests, it's always kind of difficult for them because I always ask them to choose one yeah. or maybe two, like of the stories or of the people experiences that has touched you in a way or has uh, teach you something. Yeah. What would you say from all of this year that you've been working with it, with these people and with these problems and with this, against this issue, trying to solve it? Yeah. What would you, what would you remember? Um, you want a happy or a sad story? <laughs> Actually, I would like one of each, if possible, okay. please. Okay. So, well, one that touched my heart, and uh, and I feel that it's uh, something that actually made me feel that there's more things that we need to do, is this family that we received. The father was Mexican, the, one, the mom was Mexican, they were undocumented in the U.S. and they had six kids that were U.S. citizens. So he got deported and the family followed him. They were in San Miguel, but the kids, six kids from two to 14, were having a really bad time uh, with the culture. They didn't speak Spanish and they were they were getting depressed about not being able to be with their friends, with the grandparents. And so the mom, she went through a really, really bad depression. And at the end, she decided that she won, wanted them to go back to the US and live with their their grandparents. So well, we never talk about the family separation, like in this kind of issues, we talk about family separation at the border, but this decision have, had to be made in the family. Like they decided they ha there had to be like a family separation and they send the kids to the US. So the mom and the dad are not able to go to the US because they, they, can't. they, they can't. So so just like watching this mom, like being, being like making the decision of sending the kids like The, the oldest was 14, so imagine like it's, it's this is kids we're talking about, not even teenagers. Right. So right. I think that was a that, that was a really sad story. It's something that we we wish we could do more, but she made the decision that that the kids were gonna have a better life uh, in the U.S. So that's what she decided. Right. And yeah. that's like so so can we again. Uh, say it and see how peculiar every single story or every single situation is because basically when they decided to leave is because they're looking for like having a better life and that's what like inspired yeah. them but yeah. then they have now at this point at this point of their life they had to leave the kids again separate yeah. from them so they can have a better life 
Yeah, exactly. Very, very difficult situation to see, for sure. Yeah. And, and I think I can say that I have a happy story because all, all stories are difficult. Uh, as I said, we've been here for one year and everybody that we've been worked with, which is around 50 people right now, 50 different families, they all still going through a transition. But I can tell you a story about this family that had, uh, we paid the tuition of the kids the for two years. And they started to go to school, a bilingual school, and they started to go to school and they just started loving Mexico. And the dad was a little bit angry because he didn't understand Mexico. He didn't wanna like, he didn't wanna be here. And the kids were like, super happy and they say like I think this is the best thing that have happened to us because this is so like we're loving San Miguel we love the school we want to stay here and we don't want you to feel sad and we'll we want this to be our home so it was beautiful just to see the kids encouraging the dad to to start a new life here mission accomplished on that one <laughs> <laughs> Sam, and tell me a little about um, the group of the, all of the crew of the Caminamos Juntos organization. How many are you guys? How is the day to day work with you? Yeah. How do you guys make yeah. all of this magic happen? Well, we are a volunteer based organization. We, we only like two staff, which is me and the job specialist. And everybody else volunteer. Like we, we have professional volunteers therapists, lawyers, immigration lawyers, uh, we have social workers, we have uh, the social workers are case managing the, the um, uh, participants, we call them participants, and uh, I think that's it, like basically like we, we have around 25 uh, volunteers, mostly from the U.S., and as Mexicans, we have like an advisory, Mex Me uh, Mexican advisory group that we gather with them once in a while to like help us work with uh, the different issues that we see in San Miguel. How does Caminamos, organi Caminamos Juntos organization make uh, the resources, the financial resources yeah. possible? Well, we originally got a fund from the UU, a Charlie Slider UU grant for a startup. And then we made a proposal to Church World Services and they gave us basically like the two years uh, for the operation. So we are, now we call them our partner because we're continuing this journey and and like restructuring things and providing different services, not just for people that have been deported, but people uh, also people in transit. And we want to continue like this journey of helping, you know? So Church World Service is our main partner on this. I see. And then Sam, um, well, it's been a year you have worked with 50 different uh, families, 50 different cases. So you see, and all of your crew, I assume, also see that the impact, the positive impact that you are making by helping uh, these people. So how do you see the future? What would you like to see changing or getting better or improving for Caminamos Juntos organization? Well, Caminamos Juntos right now, uh, and talking about the volunteers and the people that we work with, uh, we have realized the opportunities that we have to share these experiences and to share these stories and to talk about education. So we also are creating uh, an education program. We want to work with universities. We want to do uh, immigration panels. We want to do immigration conference not just not just talking about the north border but talking about the immigration in general like starting the starting the conversation with kids starting the conversation with students bringing a uh, social um awareness. Services, service yeah and embracing awareness so uh, our future as caminamos juntos is uh, hopefully not just providing the services 
to the people that have been affected, but also talking to the people that can stop this happening or make a difference. And we want to start doing this with, especially with uh, universities and schools. So we can, we're working on creating programs for, for, for students. Much needed nowadays. I applaud yeah. of um, you guys' work, Caminamos Juntos. I think it's a great idea and also a seed that you're planting. It's been a year, but I am cheering for many more to come. Sam, I'll give you a space for you to share the social media information online. Go ahead. Yeah, our website is cjsma.org. Uh, we're working together at to Caminamos Juntos, what we work together on Facebook. And our email is caminamosjuntos at cjsma.org. You can contact us and if you want to volunteer, if you want to if you want to know more, if you have any problem that you think that we can help, we're here. Sam, thank you so much. A kiss until oh, San Miguel de Allende, a beautiful city that you guys have. I hope you much success with Caminamos Juntos. And also, I want to say thank you for all of your crew, all of the people that work with you. Bye bye. Gracias, Fabiana. Adios. So let's spread the word. If you know somebody that can benefit from this program, please pass the word. Whether you know about people that need assistance with immigration issues in the US or Mexico, or people that could help with financial donation or volunteering work. To connect with me, send me an email or write me a private message to my Facebook page. Stay connected and until next time with me, bye-bye.